Hey, good day guys. Uh, let me talk a bit about uh, how to trade pullback patterns. So a few things we're going to discuss in terms of this video. Number one is uh, what really is a pullback. Number two is how to find these pullback patterns. Uh, number three is how are you going to make an entry if you do find a pullback pattern. Uh, number four is in terms of identifying the exits and how you're going to manage the trade. So let's start. Uh, for any kind of a pullback pattern that you're looking to trade, right? Whether I mean, it might have different names. Some something called as a retracement, consolidation. What you're really trying to do is trying to find trends, right? You need the stock to be moving in a particular direction, whether it's to the upside or downside, right? So as long as the st uh, stock is moving or a market or the currency, whatever, you're, whatever you're trading, doesn't really matter what it is, as long as it's moving in a particular direction. And if there is a pause or if there is a retracement, which is a pullback, um, then that's what really is going to be definition of a pullback, which is falling back a retracement of a security from its peak, right? So these price movements generally is what really showing is a pause or a consolidation within which you can try to make an entry uh, and hoping for the stock to trend in direct continue with trend, right? Because usually. Uh, a stock in motion is supposed to remain in motion. Uh, it's very unlikely for the stock to be uh, in motion and then kind of not move anywhere. Right? Uh, now, in terms of pullbacks, the, these two are the major types of pullbacks that we generally see in the markets. One is a more straightforward one, which is an up move, a pullback, and then the, con uh, the trend continuation. Or there could be a more of a complex move where the stock actually goes up, pulls back, tries to grow up again, but pulls gain before it actually goes. So this one is more of a shakeout because I mean, if somebody is trying to find these patterns, right, which is uh, the first move, the second move, and the third move, right? So somebody's trying to see the first move, the second move, and the third move. I mean, if something like this happens, then all of these people who bought it over here, they're all getting stopped out. Now, when this trend actually resumes itself, you will actually see this one is going to be a way bigger push as compared to over here because there's no surprised buyers or sellers in here. In here, all the sellers who are trying to short it, now they're all trapped, and all the buyers who bought it on this pullback, I mean, they got rid of, they got shaken out over here, and now when the stock resumes, they want to double down and make trying to move the direction, right? So whether this is uh, about a stock which is moving on the upward direction, I mean, if you flip it, you can see the downward, the downside one as well. Now let's look in terms of the trigger. Right. So key things that you want to look look at in terms of taking a look at full pullback is of course the trend identification. Uh, I've made a videos about finding trends. Uh, one of the easiest ways is looking at the moving averages. Right. Uh, you, if you try to find a moving average, whether it's a 20 day, 50 day, 100 day, depending on what time frame you're trading at. Uh, so once you try to see whether the stock the stock is trending on the upside or downside, uh, I mean you can definitely look take a look at the chart from uh, from left to the right and see which side the price is moving or if you just want to take a look at the moving averages if it's trending to the upside um, then generally it is going to be a uh, trend continuation to the upside if the trend is on the downside the moving averages so let's say if you're an intraday moving if you are an intraday trader or a short term trader you're looking at a 20 day or 50 day moving average uh, then you want to trade in that particular direction right now just because there is a trend you're not trying to go and trying to find uh, you're just gonna buy it just because of the sake of you wanna buy it. You wanna see a couple of things, right? You definitely wanna see a reversal candle pattern. Uh, so I've made videos about candlestick pattern. You can definitely go into the YouTube videos and view it. Uh, different kind of candlestick patterns that you can see. Uh, could be an inside day bar, could be a pin bar, right? And what you also wanna see in terms of the volume uh, being drying up, right? So during the up move, you really wanna see the volume starting to go up, right? This is a volume burst. And when the stock is actually pulling back or maybe consolidation, right? You want the volume to actually dry up. And once it actually resumes, you want the stock, the volume to start piling in again, right? Similar in terms of complicated move, uh, what you want is definitely you want to see the trend identification. You want to take a look at which side the stock is actually trending. Uh, you want to also take a look at if there's a reversal candle patterns where it is forming. And you want to see if there's a volume pickup once the trend resumes, right? So where you want to see these reversal candle patterns is where there's a confluence of moving average, right? So you want to see where the moving average and Fibonacci intersects as close as possible. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. I mean, market, market structure is not exact, right? It's a bit random, but you can try to find uh, the pattern in it. 
so as long as you're able to find a reversal candle pattern along with the trigger of volume uh, with the confidence of moving average in Fibonacci's then that would be your trigger now in terms of stop placements right so if there's an entry over here uh, you do, you, there's a couple of ways you can put a stop placement number one is swing low right so once you have identified this up move this pullback and now the stock is resumed you can put a stop right away under here right the other way you can try to use it is two times your ATR which is the average true range right so you can you can take a look at your the ATR of a particular stock a particular um, instrument that you're trading and try to find this average true range and double and two times it and that's the kind of risk you can put in the other way you can take a look at it is through a moving average so if you're trading a short term moving average of 20 day uh, maybe you want to put a stop on if the stock breaches or closes under 20 day moving average or maybe if the stock, if you're trading a daily time frame, maybe you want to take a look at the 50-day or 200-day moving average, and if the stock ever closes underneath it, then that's the time you want to go and close the position, right? So that's for the long positions. Uh, same thing with the, for if there's a complex move like this, right? So you can put a stop right away under, so in that way you can manage your losses. Now in terms of profit targets, uh, multiple ways you can use profit targets. Uh, you can always do it in terms of ratio of the risk, so let's say if you're risking $50 in a trade, maybe if you want to trade 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 5 to 1, depending on your risk parameters and how what is your, um, your profitability is in each trade, you can try to have those profit targets, right? The so ratio of the risk. Uh, the other one you can really do in, in terms of profit targets is trying to find the next support or the next, next resistance to take profits or simply market structure, right? Lower highs, lower lows, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, if there's a structure being broken, then that's where you want to go and put your um, put a stop. So market structure is what we're already talking about over here. Once we have this higher low confirmed, we want to put a stop over here. So that's market structure. A moving average break, we already discussed about it. If it breaks a certain moving average, depending on which time frame you're trading at, uh, that could be a position for you to take profit targets. Right. Now looking at a few charts. Uh, so this is a chart of NVIDIA. Uh, once you see this stock started trending up right so it went goes from 80 bucks to 120 bucks so about 40 dollar move for 80 dollar stock that's about a 50 50 percent move right so once the stock moves up this is more of a complex pattern right so the stock comes down tries to go up again comes down tries to go up again now once you see this you look at this hundred dollar break right once it breaks this hundred dollar break and now people who are bearish they might say hey you know what this is kind of a head and shoulder pattern. This is one shoulder, these are the shoulder. We want to short it over here and for this to fall down. This is a big picture. I mean, if you didn't see all of this over here, if you just saw this, then yeah, I mean, you will see two shoulders and you see this break of a trend line and hoping for it to fall down. So now you have a lot of people who are shorting this stock, right? This up, uh, this uptick in the down, when the stock is moving down, you see this uptick. So there's a lot of trap sellers in here. So once the stock co covers through this position over here, uh, once the stock clears this resistance, you see this gigantic move from 100 to, I mean, almost 200 bucks, right? It's a 100% move. So after the first 50% move, it has a pullback. Everybody down here who thought this was a head and shoulder pattern got trapped. Once it broke this moving average, and now you have this ultimate 100% move, right? Um, something like MU, which is Micron, if you take a look at similar pattern on here, you see the stock going up from 15 bucks to 30 bucks, 100% move. Now you see this uptick in volume when the stock closes down on the weeklies, right? So, I mean, if you look at the head and shoulder pattern, you might see, hey, you know what? This is one shoulder, this is the head, this is another shoulder, there's an up downside. You try to draw a moving average and you see this break and then you think, hey, you know what? This stock is gonna tank. But once again, once it takes out the key level, takes out the key level, everybody who is trying to short over here is now trapped. And guess what? Once it clears this resistance level, I mean, it went from 32 odd to almost 50 bucks in quick time, right? So that's one way to trade uh, pullbacks. Another one to look at is in terms of Netflix. Uh, so Netflix, if you see this first up move, 100 to 140 bucks, close to about 40% move, has one. This is a simple pullback, right? It pulls back to the moving average. So this is, might be a spot for you to. You see these reversal candles, I mean, three candles down, and you see following this doji, uh, or so they call the pin bar, and then it moves, tries to trend again, right? Now, if you're trying to see a bit more complex pattern, is when the stock goes up, goes down, goes up. Now it looks like, hey, you know what? 
this might be the start time when stocks are actually going to go start going down. Uh, but it actually goes back up and it breaks through the levels and then you get this gigantic up move, right? So these are the ways uh, in terms of if you're, if you're looking to try to trade pullbacks. These are really good examples. Once again, you want to see uh, in terms of the trend identification, trying to see whether your stock is going up or down. You want to find reversal candle patterns. Uh, you definitely want to take a look at the volume, uh, moving averages, and the Fibonacci levels to see where you exactly want the stock to be, right? So you see the, the pattern up, you see the volume getting dried up, right? So this is a nice 50% pullback down here, right? And then you see this up move. Uh, pretty much in all these pullbacks, you'll see the same thing, right? Uh, same thing over here. You see this up move from 30 bucks to 45 bucks, right? Or even 50 bucks. So $15 move on a $30 stock. So that's about 50% move over here. It has this pullback. Everybody who's trying to short it in the $40, hoping for it to actually roll over, once it closes above this $45 key level, it just shot right back up to over $60, right? So this is really the key. I mean, everybody who's short over here, everybody gets trapped and you get this gigantic up move. Right. So hopefully you guys like the video. Please like and subscribe. Uh, keeps me motivated to make more videos for you. You guys have a great day.